Okay, so this video is mainly designed to help you if you're thinking about buying the Canon 250D, also known as the SL3 in America, and that is the camera there. I have bought it, and there's a number of other camera options out there which are similar in terms of spec and overall performance. However, why should you get the Canon 250? I'm gonna answer a number of questions today in this video. So we're gonna be straight to the point. It's not messing about today. We're gonna to give you all the tips, the things I thought about when I was purchasing the camera, what camera I moved from, what camera I use at the moment. I will do you like an overall spec and let you know to put your mind at ease if you should buy this camera, if it's a good option. It's aimed at beginners, so it's like a starter type camera. However, I've brought it, why? Let me explain. So let's have a look at the few points first. In the chapters, I'm gonna put a breakdown for you. So you'll see each section. Click to the chapter that you're interested in and just watch that section. Um, you'll find some really interesting tips throughout the video. So if you watch the whole video, you'll, you'll find that useful as well. Hello, welcome to the show. My name is Zulf and I'm your host. I basically do a number of videos around photography, video gear, how you can use your cameras in new ways to live stream and a number of other things. So check out the channel, you'll find loads of videos helpful. I'll link you to a few cards about this camera specifically. We are focusing on the Canon 250D today and why you should think about it. So the first thing, how big is the Canon 250D? Well, there's a the camera. Here's my hand. And when I got it, I was actually surprised at how small it is compared to other cameras out there. So that's the camera. And you can see there, I'll do a comparison with another camera next to it, which I'm showing you there. And it was lightweight as well. So it was actually very lightweight. The 250D SL3, I compared to my 550D, which is an older camera. However, manufacturing has come a long way since the old camera. The old ones were built a bit more heavy, solid. They felt that way, but now we're getting more mass produced, so it is lighter. However, for cameras, lightweight might be a good idea. So to answer your question, how big the Canon 250 is, here is a comparison next to another camera, which is a 5D Mark II. Not a great comparison because that's a full frame camera and that's a crop sensor. If you're not familiar with that, I did a video explaining that. So here you can see, if I show you this camera held up, that just feels more natural. You can easily have that around your neck and not worry about it. And for a side by side comparison, there's the, obviously it's a different lens on that camera and that's your body. Let's show you the body on its own without a lens. That gives you an idea. Let's do a top down view. You can kind of see the sensor size there versus the sensor size there. And that's like a nice little comparison for you. But yeah, my cameras are used a lot, so they're not um, they're not mothered as much. I use them a lot in terms of all sorts of video and photo and they take a knocking. So you want a good camera that can handle that. So that's a good look at the comparison of the size. You can put a full frame professional series lens on this camera. So you'll see here, look at that. So instantly the camera looks pro with a pro lens on. So how does it look with the pro lens? Well, that's how it looks with the pro lens. So there you go. It is a bit front heavy now because the camera is not as heavy. However, you can put bigger lenses on there. Is the Canon 250D a good camera? Well, to answer that, I'm going to talk you through a few things that I thought about when I was buying this camera. Firstly, there is the camera. It comes with a kit lens, which looks like that plasticky type thing. Still a great lens for overall performance. I have put on here my 24 to 70 just to show you can put pro lenses on there. And what that means for you is you can swap between EFS and full frame lenses. So that's the camera as you would uh, purchase it if you bought it as part of a kit. Let's put that back under the camera and 250 is a good camera because of a few things firstly it is a camera designed especially if you're new to photography it's more of a beginner camera it's a good budget the price is expect quite reasonable to be honest you could pick up a new one on amazon around the six to seven hundred pound region with a lens second hand you can go cheaper so keep an eye out for that um, what would be good with this camera is it has an articulating screen it has autofocus which you can check in video. It does 4K video and it's just a nice form factor. It's 24 megapixels. There's a few additional benefits as part of it, which I'll cover in the video as we go wrong. So to answer your question, is the 250 a good camera? Yes, it's a good camera. Of course, it depends on what you're doing, but it'll handle most situations quite well. 
So how to set up your camera. You can basically start shooting with this camera for under 15 minutes. You would need to take it out of the box, put the lens on, put in a memory card and put in the battery. Make sure you charge the battery. You can see I have inserted the battery here. I have the memory card here. I'm using a, a micro SD card in an adapter, but I would recommend getting a full on SD card, which I normally use, which I'm going to just put in there, write it in. You would attach the lens. You do that by putting the lens on. I have done a full detailed video about this. It's about half an hour long. So if you're totally new to the camera, I'll link you in the cards to the full video where you can actually set up the camera from scratch and how you would get it. Um, again, you can start using the camera quite easily. I have also got a video about using the menus in this camera specifically. This is more of like essential questions to ask yourself before you're buying it. So it may be a point that once you bought it, you check out other videos about how to set it up. So that gives you more information in there. Next up, does the Canon 250D have a clean HDMI out and will it autofocus in video mode? That's a really important question to keep in mind when buying this camera. And that was one of the main factors I bought the camera. So this camera actually allows you to go out via HDMI with the clean menu. What I mean by clean menus is this you see right now does not have any of the little icons that the camera would display like the battery life the number of the video and all those little settings so it does have an option to have a clean display which would be excellent for live streaming so to answer that question yes it does offer clean hdmi out as well as it has focusing on your face so if you go to a really low number for example here i've got a blurry background what you can do is make sure the camera is always focusing on your face if you don't have autofocus if you were to move forward and back in your scene you'll basically get blurry so the camera won't follow you. That's the idea about that. So how to live stream with your Canon 250D. I'm gonna quickly run you through the setup and what you need to buy to do it. I have a few things on order, which I'll get to, but I'll let you know about them and replace some of these with those items. Everything I'm talking about will be linked in the description in my Amazon shop. So click on that and you'll see a, an ideas list. So firstly, we've got the camera. Then we're gonna need, right now I have I'm testing the cheapest HDMI capture card you can buy on eBay, which is this thing here. It goes into USB and it has a HDMI out. Don't buy it. I'm telling you that now. I brought it, I tested it twice, and in both live streams I was doing, it froze the camera. And I had to actually unclip it and reset this up. And in a live stream, that's the worst thing you want to happen. So don't buy it. But I'm using this here in place of the Elgato 4K HDMI capture card that I've ordered and it's on, on um, it's coming through. So when you're doing this as an enthusiast, you can use cheaper equipment. You'll know my channel is about using cheap equipment to make your photography gear live stream. But sometimes you can go too cheap where it is a detriment to your video. So if you're doing a professional video for a client or a sponsored video, you don't want this to freeze and then you have to end your live stream and do another live stream. HDMI, we're gonna use that in this example. And you're going to need this beautiful thing here. So the camera will be a mini HDMI, but we have a full size HDMI cable here. So we need to adapt that to be able to fit inside of the camera. I'm going to show you a close up of all of this plugging in, so don't worry. Um, so how to live stream your Canon 250D. Firstly, we get the camera. You'll notice this camera has a battery inserted. I have also ordered a dummy battery. What that does is it puts in the bottom of here and it actually has a parallel lead to plug into the mains. So the power camera can be powered for longer. So that's something else you need, which I don't currently have Amazon order. Um, and okay, so on the side of the camera, we'll see a few little things there. You can see it says HDMI there, which is where our trusty little adapter comes in, which is this thing here I was showing you a little while ago. So firstly, we plug this into the camera Okay, it's a bit more, you'll notice it's a bit more hard to plug in there, which is good, I suppose, because it's not going to fall out. So you'll know it's got a nice little click to it. You put it down, you have to firmly put it in. So right now, this is the wrong one that I ordered. This is a right-facing one, and I actually needed the left-facing. So I have since ordered the left-facing ones, but every time I do a live video, I'm using this as an example. So make sure you get the right one. I'm using multiple versions of these in my other live streaming cameras. So if I show you quickly what I mean, I've got one view here, which is a straight front view. I've got a top-down camera. Then I've got my wide-angle camera there for extra functions. This is live stream. I'm using a remote control to do all of this. And I can explain about that as well. So let me know if you're interested in that. So right now there, you'll see I've plugged in the HDMI. Now I've got this. So then we need our HDMI cable to plug in to this adapter. So now that is basically just making it the right adapter for my camera. 
then HDMI capture card. I won't recommend getting this cheap one here, which is called HD capture card for live streaming. Don't get it. But I'm using this in place of my Elgato, which I will do a video on when it comes in. So we plug this into there. And now I have a USB. That USB will go into my computer. And when that plugs into my computer, which I'll show you right now, I have software that I use. My software is OBS. I'm gonna quickly add this camera in and show you that. Okay, so that's me plugged in and set on OBS. Holy cow, mate, that's a bit close there, isn't it? Okay, so that's 18 millimeter. However, I need to adjust it. One second, hold your horses, people. Okay, there. So I need to look at the settings to turn off a few things, but this is a view from the camera itself. Getting a HDMI view out of this camera and the display it's on as well. So if the display is on, that means, well, I'm hopefully showing you that there. You'll see there if I look down, my display is on and the autofocus is there, but on the actual camera view, which is the top screen, the smaller screen, you can see it's fully clean, HDMI out. How do we do that? Let me show you. So we basically go to the menu, which I'm gonna do one-handed there, and there's the menu. So let me switch the camera around so I can show you how I'm controlling this. So these are the screen settings you wanna copy basically. Let me make that screen a bit bigger so you can see exactly what. Okay, so here we've got the controls. We can go through the screen menus. The first one is the camera and it's number one. That's the settings. Pause the video, make sure you're copying those settings. Number two, that's what I've got. Number three, that's what I've got. Number four is the important one, HDMI info display. You want it clean HDMI output. That's what I've got. And then in the right screen, I have autofocus method, autofocus on my face, movie, servo, autofocus enable, eye detection enable. So this is basically setting you up for a live stream to be able to be clean. So now if I make this out of the menu, let's go back to camera, you'll see I'm getting the display here and out of the HDMI, you'll see the other display over here. So that's like a bit of an inception thing, but let me flip this screen out, flip it around, and you'll see there, let me make that full screen so you can see the full experience of the HDMI there. So that's how you would look at. So you can see obviously it is going to be controlled and focused. It ought to adjust, you might hear it in the mic, but if you've got off-camera mic, it should be okay. So as part of this, you will need to think about a few things. The camera will auto-focus during your live stream if you move around quite a bit. So I want to let you know how loud is the autofocus on this camera. So let's put it in autofocus mode. So that's this one. And let me swap back over to the other lens. Holding in the same distance. So see that? That's quite loud. Let me go back. Because I'm quite... That's. But then again, if you get pro glass, you know you'd expect to get something for your money so that's why it... it's virtually silent wow okay i'm impressed with that so is it worth getting a better lens it definitely worth getting better lens we're going to touch on that in a bit anyway so don't worry about that we're going to cover that so let me put this lens back on my 5d body we have got a number of cameras right now i have got one two three four five six and seven seven cameras that i use for live streaming so if you're not sure about it let me tell you, I've done enough testing with a number of cameras, from action cameras, webcams, all the way to cameras, so you're in the right place to help you live stream and find the best option. So don't be worried. Okay, so let's get, uh, carry on, let's carry on. Let's carry on. I'll stop bigging myself up, my head's gonna get too big. Okay, so uh, how loud is autofocus on the 250D? We did that, best lens to get for your Canon 250. I haven't touched on that, but based on that little test we just did, maybe you need to pick up yourself a 20, 40, 70, 2.8. However, if you can't, you know, you can get 50 millimeter 1.4 lens, which is what I'm using right here for my live stream. It gives a nice background blur, amazing lens. Let me just show you what it looks like, the box even. 
that's the 50 millimeter 1.4 us m lens not the most expensive lens uh, if you've got the space it's a good option but keep in mind my camera on a tripod is maybe about two meters away from me so if you've got that distance you're fine if not you'd have to go wide angle because you might want to have the camera closer to you which a 24 to 70 will do and it's a 2.8 aperture the lower the aperture the more in focus you would be and the background will be blurry which most people are looking for that kind of look so lens wise look at the 50 millimeter 1.4 or a wide lens you can go prime if you wanted to or you can get a zoom lens which will do you well all over the spectrum bigger lens where well, it's all right again the 18 millimeter that comes on that is not a low aperture lens it's going to be 3.5 at its widest point so that won't be as blurry as you could get it if you wanted to make it pro but you can shoot at a high ISO. If you're not familiar with these terms I'm talking about, ISO, shutter speed, aperture, I did a full learning video series about it. So if you're new, check out the cards up here somewhere and you'll see my learning series. I made like a whole selection of videos totally free that you can check out explaining how to use a camera and that. But that's another thing. So that was a quick overview to help you set yourself up and answer the questions of, is the 250D a good camera for you to get for live streaming? I'm hoping you find that video helpful. I've done another video here about setting up your camera for live streaming. So I reckon you should check that out as well as other comparisons. I'll see you on that next video. Take care and see you soon.